Okay. Ready? My hand. How are you feeling? How am I feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. How are you feeling? Yeah. Oh, you. Mm, how are you feeling? I'm feeling hot. very warm. How can you be so I don't know. Hot? I don't oh know. Don't gosh. smash my hair, man. How am I gonna look on the TV? It's <laughs> just the camera here. Right. Claudia, what, what do you think about the 50 years anniversary of TSL? How's it feel? I can't even imagine what it feels like. Well, time is elusive. Time is elusive. Time is a commodity, too. <laughs> Time's for sale. Oh, no, that's truth. Truth is for sale. Truth's a commodity. That's from Linda's new show. It's called... Yeah, we're uh, working on a new piece. Said and done. TSL was started in... Uh, 1973. Claudia was not with me at that time. I met her in 1976. Where did we meet? We met at the Riverside Church. No, we met at the Universalist Church. Oh, shit. <laughs> that's, that's good. Did we really? <laughs> so, the Universalist Church was on the Upper West Side, and uh, Claudia came to see Gertrude Stein's Making of Americans. Do you remember that show, Claudia? I do remember the show. That's it. All my <laughs> memories are becoming right. blurred after 50, okay, 40, 47 years that we've been together. So this, okay. They're, they're kind of getting, they're kind of smushed together. Yeah, well, what do you expect? 50 years of TSL, you know, and the long and short answer, if there is one, it happened in an instant. That's right. That's, I think, the one thing I can share from my point of view, how 50 years went. We had a lot of possibilities because we could live cheaply in New York at that time and do our work. And then when it became apparent that that wasn't going to work out, then we started looking for another place. And, and luckily, found 434 Columbia Street. Which is where we've been for 30 years. and That's hard to believe too. We, we had a storefront in New York City. It was on, in Chelsea, it was 100 feet by 20 and uh, it was a store, which is where we rehearsed and worked. And it was a fantastic opportunity to share and to build a company. <clears throat> So going from a storefront to this amazing building uh, was a shock for us as well. So how were we going to pay the bills? How are we, what were we going to do here? I mean, we really didn't need a building this big, but while well, we had it, had a parking lot, we weren't sure we even needed one. Like, uh, but it came with the package. We took it on and started to develop uh, how to pay, how to get a mortgage, how to develop the down payment, learn all the finances around owning something, which we had never done. So there was a learning curve. It was also, this is a small city and, the, and learning how to navigate the city politics and how that all works was certainly an eye opener. But up here, it really exploded because once we got up here in what, 19, when we opened Early TSL 90s. at this warehouse, this former bakery, which was built in 1929. Uh, we really started outreach to the community here because we wanted to find out if there was an audience, where there was an audience, and slowly we built a community. Uh, and we're one of the, I guess we're the pioneers. We're some of the pioneers. We're the pioneers. Hudson. There was nothing here when we came, really, nothing. So Linda. How do you Claudia. feel about the 50 years? Well, I've been going at this. I, uh, I've been talking about this, seems like for 50 years, what's happening. Uh, I think the one thing that, the constructing of ideas, no matter what it, whether it was a performance piece or uh, the next calendar of events or movies, or would it be an opera or would it be uh, a gallery exhibit, it's all based on the same principle, that it that we're open to new ideas, that it'd be flexible, that I think the one thing when people walk in here, the TSL is never the same place, it's always different. It's always changing, moving, rearranging. And I think the flexibility and the impermanence of what we do is part of the pleasure of making 
making it happen. And when you deal about impermanence, you're basically saying it's risky. It's always a risk here. Uh, will we have enough money to pay the staff? Will we have enough money to continue the year financially? That is uh, always on our mind. And I think one of the things in the future that we're hoping to do is build an endowment for TSL, which would allow us uh, some security and give TSL a future. I think that when I think about what's next, that is one thing that is on our mind. If we can construct that endowment, which would give uh, a security to TSL that would help uh, the young people that want to continue this mission. And that is definitely on our minds because this is the only 50th celebration we're going to have. Yeah, I'm not going to be around for the <laughs> second 50th. I've decided I'm just going to retire before that. It's all there is to it. I don't know about you. <laughs> You know, it doesn't, I think we're definitely in the spirit of the Buddhist principle. We do live in the moment and the moment is really the precious thing in life. And that's really where we are as an arts organization. We're going to be celebrating, we're going to have a big party on July 1st, but on July, July 2nd. 2nd. July 1st is when uh, Roberto Juarez, this wonderful art exhibit, art exhibit is going to go up and then, and the then next on day. Su uh, Sunday, the second, Sunday the 2nd, it's going to be a big party, big tent. Big tent. The barbecue. Uh, oh, your barbecue tent. We're barbecue. gonna barbecue the tent. We're gonna barbecue the tent. <laughs> yes, but we're going to uh, give out sparklers. No, no don't so, give it away. Oh, I'm, oh, yeah, no, I we're not gonna that. I'm not gonna say that. So there's gonna be a big barbecue. It's gonna be wonderful. TSL is gonna be open. The bookstore, the downstairs, the gallery, the two, the two auditoriums. There's gonna be food and drink, and um, great celebrations all around. Everything that TSL does or becomes is a constant reimagining of what it's about. And I think ultimately what it's about is using art as a means to create opportunities to have a conversation, to make change, to discuss the politics of our life and times. And, and our generation, I think in particular, we're, we were influenced heavily by what was going on in the world of uh, war and sexual identity and family. Uh, and I, that environment allowed us, and, and Claudia and I in particular, to find art as a means of speaking what we saw, what we, what we had experienced as growing up in America and being part of uh, the new voices that would come out of our generation and influenced a lot of things that are happening now. So we challenged the narrative. We challenged uh, sexual identity. We challenged how people uh, came and went on stage. We merged light and sound and movement and dance. And Claudia really was the key to making all that happen because ultimately Claudia's ability to perform the, the experiments were extremely successful. We did a lot of physical and and vocal work in the other, oh, earlier days training, and one of our trainings was in uh, Japanese arts, and that made a huge difference for me as an artist because um, it's it was form. You learn the form, and then you put the content on top of it. The other way is you have the content, and then you you know work on the form. But for me, it worked with form first and then content on top. And that was, it worked perfectly with Linda because the words were the form. And then I could fill in with what I can do physically and, and, and verbally, I can fill it in and somehow make it work. I don't know how it works exactly. Uh, I don't, all I know is that when it does work, it feels right. Uh, I think that's just the way artists are, possibly. Linda's works are all amoebas, I always say. The edges are always changing a little bit and they never set, which is great because I don't like setting things and then just saying, okay, that's the way it's gonna be from here on out. Because if you set it, it can't grow. And so any work that we do now, let's say someone wanted to repeat this work in the future when we're not around or something, well, that's that's up to them. There's a there's a there's a form, 
There's a form there, there's ideas on how to do it, but then you bring your own talent to that. We managed to do it a long time, basically 24 seven. And people have a hard time believing that. But when you're busy doing something that you love and something that's building something, and that includes a lot of people, then it's, it's, it's hard work, but it's not hard work. It's what you do. That's kind of what you live for. TSL is known and famous for its activism. I'm not sure if I like that word. Community and community engagement and uh, yeah, activism is it's, it's kind of worn out. Yeah, but it's kind of worn out, but we're still at it, I guess. <laughs> Being two uh, queer women in a small community when we arrived wasn't very un wasn't so normal to be out. And I think being out in this community made a difference to the people, to the young people that were here and saw two leaders, uh, adventurous women taking on something remarkable in their home, which was an unusual and, a, you know, for many a life-changing experience. Who we are, what we've done, sort of, I always thought that sometimes TSL occupied a place uh, in a foreign land. Whether it was Hudson or anywhere in America, we were always going to be the strange, unusual, risky, uh, adventurous. Hard ass, hard ass place. Yeah, which you're not sure, like you wanna enter here and what's going on? It seems that there are more and more people who have, don't know about TSL coming in. Uh, you see them like, Almost every morning, someone wanders in and says, oh, I've never been here. What's going on here? You get to show them around. The two auditoriums, we have a big one and a small one. The gallery space where we always have wonderful art exhibits and the cafe. And then the downstairs, you use bookstore and the stuff store. Not to be missed. So much good stuff down there and fabulous used books. You know, the used bookstore and the gallery as we came out of COVID really helped us come out of COVID as an, as an income. There's a lot of people who support us here. Membership is key to helping TSL. That's It's a modest amount of money that we ask everybody to contribute every year. It gives us that one, one line on our finances that keeps growing and that membership is a huge help to our to our finances and and our spirit we like to have members sign up join up and and share all of the amazing things that happen here and now we're going to be doing a new a real new piece that we are spending a lot of time on we're going to be doing that piece for the hudson eye on august 25th and then we're going to be doing it in uh, williamsburg in new york in November. So this is good for us because we get to go into our studio, our auditorium, and work on a piece for a long time. And we haven't been able to do that in a long time because we're there's so much going on here, so much we have to take care of, etc. So so we here we'll give you a kiss on the cheek. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.